Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this se segment, we want to discuss a little bit more in depth about this very important law in Q systems and various other applications, and that's called Little's Law. So, for a start, let's just look at the outcome. What does Little's Law tell us? It says that for a Q system, if you have a Q system, and we have a Q system, right? We have a Q system, and this is called Q and we would then have a server that's s all right we have a queue system it's made out of two uh, internal components q the queue part of the queue system and the server but little slaw is not really uh, strictly speaking uh, working within the definition of queuing theory or queue systems what it does uh, entail is that it is looking at the entire queue system as one block, one black box block. All right, so we have this queue boundary, and I will call it more like a little slow boundary. So you try to draw a boundary, you try to draw a boundary, and then there will be entities coming in. Entities in queuing theory speak is will be the customers. They come in at a rate of lambda, and that is known with some distribution maybe exponentially randomly uniformly nor with normal bell curve distribution whatsoever doesn't matter little's law is very powerful in that it is able to take care of various distribution inputs doesn't matter what uh, what distribution you have you just tell little's law that your average input rate is lambda okay and suppose it takes uh, w seconds for the entities to come out from the little slow boundary so little slow boundary just an arbitrary uh, en enclosure all right and then you have traffic flow anything that you know that the average rate of flow is lambda and it takes w seconds or else w minutes or hours doesn't matter i just use seconds w seconds to for a particular identified entity to go in and come out of the little slow boundary. Okay, so my my uh, physical arrow here indicates the length of time. And then we ask how much, what is the quantity, average quantity of entities trapped in this little slow boundary? That's our L. Okay, and Little's Law provides a relationship to link up these three numbers. They are average out constants, but instead of being, being unconstrained uh, constants that can change on their own without influencing others, Little's Law says, nope, they are totally restricted to follow uh, Little's law relationship. That is, L is equal to lambda times W. Okay, so that is uh, basically what Little's law is thinking about, what it is telling us, and what it is not telling us is that, you know, it assumes that inside there are several compartments and all. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't have to assume that. It doesn't assume that the input must be. Uh, exponentially distributed or constant you know uniformly distributed no anything goes right um, anything goes and of course the output may have the same or altered distribution nobody knows and it's not little slaw's uh, conclusion to say anything now uh, the if the input rate is lambda entities per second then of course the output rate has to be lambda entities per second but then how come there are entities stuck in the conf confined uh, enclosure? How do we think about that? Now, I hope you have seen the kind of uh, garden hose, the green color garden hose, uh, where one end it is fixed onto a tap, all right, very securely. And let's say the garden hose is very, very long okay maybe uh 10 meters or more we don't know right some some distance and in such a way that 
when you turn on the tap, initially empty, it will take 10 seconds okay, for the water to first come out from the other end of the hose. So thereby telling us that the water droplets take 10 seconds on average to traverse through the entire garden hose. So far so good, right? So we might say that therefore in my garden hose example, W equals to 10 seconds. Suppose we learn from public utilities uh, authorities that lambda is uh, 3 liters per minute. Uh, so therefore, well, let's just say for simplicity, 2 liters per second. Very, very high pressure kind of uh, situation for simplicity, right? So in that case, we ask how much water is wasted when we turn off the tap. Because once we turn off the tap, there's no more pressure and the water that, you know, will be left in the entire green tube pipeline will just be sort of uh, left to drain into the uh, drain. So we ask every time we do that, how much water is being wasted? How much water is wasted when we turn off the tap? So in some sense, we are asking how much volume of water is in the entire green hose, isn't it? It's the same because once we turn off the tap, the, uh, the momentarily the entire green hose is filled with water, but there's no more pressure. So the water will just start to drain off. And one way is of course to physically measure it, uh, dump, it dump it into the pail and then, you know, do some calculations and weighing of the pail. Alternatively, we can use Little's Law and say, the total amount of water droplets entity will be given by lambda times W. So that's equal to 2 liters per second times 10 seconds. Notice how the, the units cancel out to give us the correct unit. 20 liters of water would have been wasted every time we turn off the tap. That must be a very, very long pipe. And the pressure is high. That's why we have... Um, we have 10 seconds only, right? But despite it being just 10 seconds, because the, the pressure is high and the tube is very long, uh, even though it takes 10 seconds, there would have been a lot of water trapped in the pipe, which I didn't say how was how long, right? 